One year ago to this day, we had the goal to set out to buy a magic key, to make a reservation, and go to the park the same day. Well, one year later, today, we are here to renew that magic key which we had set forth on that goal. What's changed since then? What's new? What's the same? What can we expect in going into another year of the Magic Key program? All that and more, because today we are going to renew our Magic Key. All right, so we're here at the Magic Key portion of the Disneyland website. We're gonna go through really quickly on what you can find, all the information there is on it, and what's necessary to kind of make your decision on what you need to do next to renew the pass, or if you're watching in the, in the future where availability is there, to buy a pass. So before we get into what's changing this year, let's talk about what we had before going into this year. So essentially the same thing as last year, there's gonna be four tiers. You're gonna have the Inspire Key, Believe Key, Enchant Key, Imagine Key, Inspire being the highest, Imagine being the lowest. So in order to use your Magic Key Pass, you need to make a theme park reservation. You can make a reservation for either Disneyland or California Adventure. Basically, you have to start the day in that park, except after 1 p.m. you can go to either park, whichever one you would like, back and forth. For that, you have to go to your starting park in which you made the reservation for. There is a no-show policy, so if you make a reservation for any specific day, they will ding you for that because they don't want you making reservations where someone else can actually take it and actually go. So make sure you show up to those reservations. If you get three strikes, you are out. There is going to be a 30-day period in which you are going to be suspended from making reservations. So make sure you do not miss out those reservations. 30 days is a full month and that's one twelfth of the pass. So one of the major things that is changing this year is going to be the keys themselves. So we're actually losing out the former highest tier, which was the dream key. It used to be the key that you can make a reservation for every single day of the year, but due to a lawsuit in which there was some misunderstanding with the language in the dream key in which you can go any single day, they have decided to pause the dream key altogether. So if you had a dream key, unfortunately, the dream key is no longer available, so what did we get? If we scroll all the way back up to the top where we see the four keys, I briefly mentioned it, didn't really point anything to it. The Inspire key is where the dream key once was. So what do we get with the Inspire key? Well, it is $1,599. We're paying $200 more than what we paid last year, and that was with the dream key. So does that mean the Inspire key is giving us more? Well, let's take a look. Reservation-based admission is to one or both theme parks most days of the year most days, meaning not all days are available, will be subject to availability of park reservations allocated to Magic Key Passes. That is actually the biggest thing of this pass program, is the language in which they're using. Before, reservations were limiting the amount of passes that can go on a specific day, even though single day tickets could make a reservation and go a day that was blocked out to Magic Keys. And that was something that was a major controversy and someone actually took it up and decided to sue Disney for it. Unfortunately, we're going to feel those repercussions because since they're up in the air in legal limbo, we don't know which direction the lawsuit will go. We had to lose the Dream Key for it. So in that noble cause to fight for a better Magic Key program, we ended up kind of losing in a way. So they fixed the language on the Magic Key so that way you cannot get confused anymore. It is quite clear on what they mean. And what they mean is that there is an amount of reservations for Magic Keys and amount of reservations for regular single day tickets. They're not the same amount. There is going to be more reservations available for single day tickets than Magic Keys. And that's just simply because they're gonna make more money that way because they were doing it the entire time. Now it's officially in writing. Back to the Inspire Key, there's going to be six theme park reservations that are available to you, meaning you can make six reservations. You have one for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and once you show up on Monday and you scan your ticket, then you can make another reservation immediately. Then, something new this year, the 20% off purchase of Disney Genie Plus. We do have a full video on Genie Plus. If you are interested in that, please check it out. Disney really wasn't getting the sales from Magic Key holders because, in my opinion, it really wasn't worth it. It was $20 per person per day. Yes, it's nice to skip the line. It's not nice to pay $20 every single time. Will people do it? I don't know. Will I do it? Probably not. Personally, I'm looking for what they used to do back in the day with the Max Pass system. The only difference back then was you could purchase it as a annual pass holder and use it throughout the entire a year. So you'd pay one fee, say it was $100, and you'd have it for the rest of the year as a pass holder. I thought that was much better. Disney does not think so, so they're going to try the 20% off. Let me just say the 20% off of Disney Genie Plus is for all the passes. They're trying to inspire us 
to use Disney Genie Plus at all costs. The other thing that they're adding to the top two passes, that's the Inspire Key and Believe Key, they're going to be adding unlimited Disney Photo Pass. Essentially, that means you can go ahead and download all your photos for free, which anytime you go on a ride like Incredicoaster or Guardians of the Galaxy, you will get those photos. Again, that's only for the top two passes. On to the next benefit, the Inspire Key has a 20% off merchandise, which was something the Dream Key had before, and 15% off of dining, which was something the Dream Key also had prior. Then standard theme park parking is included, thankfully. I was a little worried that they were not going to include it, but something new that is added to the language is that lockout dates at the Mickey and Friends parking structure, Pixar Pals parking structure, and Toy Story parking area is no longer included, which I guess the highest pass never had lockout days, so this is something new for them to add. And then the next thing is going to be the Inspire Key calendar. It is different. So when we take a look at the Inspire Key, you will notice a week and a half of days where the Inspire Key can no longer go and make a reservation, which is the biggest hit to me personally. I think going on Christmas Day was always one of the best benefits, not that I always used it, or even going on New Year's Eve to start the start the year off right, or it is costing a few extra, a few extra buckaroos to pay for the Inspire Key compared to the Dream Key. On to the next one, the Believe Key, that's the one down, and the Believe Key is worth $1,099. It is a little bit more than the previous year, I believe it is about $100 more, $150 more. It has that same language as we talked about before about the reservations. This key can hold six park reservations at a time, same thing as last year. The new added thing, like I said, is the 20% off of Genie Plus, which is all the passes, and gratefully, the Believe Key also gets the unlimited photo pass as well. It does help a little bit to want to convert down to the Believe Key because we still get that benefit of PhotoPass, so it's not like the Inspire Key has anything more. I think a lot of the conversation that everyone's going to be having and renewing this year is going to be between, if you are a top tier pass holder, will you be getting the Inspire Key, will you be getting the Believe Key? It is a $500 difference, a huge gap, a much bigger gap than it was in the previous year. There is maybe not much more that you get with the Inspire Key that you don't with the Believe Key. Speaking of things, things that you lose out on the Inspire Key will, huh, is going to be the 10% off select merchandise, which was 20% off as the Inspire Key. And then you get 10% off a dining, which was 15% off in the Inspire Key. So slight difference in percentages. Is that gonna be a difference for you? If you're buying a lot of merchandise, in which case you get 10% off more than you would on the Believe Key. The bigger thing though, I think, is at the bottom is the 50% off of standard theme park parking. You get 50% off, which was something from last year, but it just kind of adds to that debate of, will you be going enough times to make the Inspire Key worth it? Because at least the Believe Key, they're throwing 50% off, which parking at the moment, and it could change, is $30 per parking. So every time you go, it is $30 with no discount. With the 50% off discount, that brings us to $15, which is pretty good, actually comparative. I mean, it's half off. I mean, who who would say no to that? So in finding the difference, the $500 difference, are you going to Disneyland that much more where you need that much more in parking? Are you spending $500 in parking? Which I did the math, if you were going and just looking at parking between the two different passes, the difference is going to be, you need to go 33 times and go more than 33 times within a year, the parking would definitely be worth it. You gotta ask yourself, are you going 33 times in the year? If you are, then definitely get the highest pass. But I guess something else that you could throw into the factor when you're ignoring price and parking is going to the Magic Key Calendar. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Believe Key Calendar and well, you're gonna see uh, quite a few days are going to be missing. We do not have the weekend of Thanksgiving, the 24th, 25th, 26th. All the Saturdays in December are going to be eliminated. That same week and a half is gone. Um, you'll notice that in February, there's going to be no Valentine's Day for you. There also will be uh, a couple Saturdays gone in March. If you are a spring breaker and your spring break happens line up in the first week of April, unfortunately, you will not be going to Disneyland. That is going to be blocked out completely. And then as we look, there's a few days in May. June is wide open. July 4th is blocked out. And then all the Saturdays in July are gone as well. So if any of those days are important to you and you're planning on going, that could be a deal breaker as well. On to the next pass, the Enchant Key. What do we get here? $699. Reservations, same rule thing. 
This time you only get four reservations. You get 20% off of Genie Plus, like I said, every pass gets it. 10% off of merchandise, 10% off of dining. But the new thing this year, which I think is amazing, is the 25% off of theme park parking at the Toy Story parking lot. In my personal opinion, it's not my favorite parking lot. It is not a parking structure. It is quite frankly a lot, but instead of riding trams, you'll be riding a bus. If I had the Enchant key, 25% off, I would gladly take it and go to Toy Story parking, which 25% off of $30 is going to be $7.50, which brings it down to $22.50. That is $7.50 every time you go. If, I mean, it's something that wasn't included that they're including now. Uh, why would you say no to that? So kudos to Disney for adding that. Now, if we go back to the Magic Key calendar, Let's go ahead and take a look at Enchant. And well, there are quite a few more days missing already. You can see we have a few Saturday, Labor Day weekends going to be off limits, Saturdays and Sundays during the month of October. So you can only go weekdays. Saturdays are gone in November. The entire week of Thanksgiving is blocked out. Saturdays and Sundays in the month of December, which is Christmas time is also blocked out starting from December 17th all the way to January 6th. You are not able to go to the parks. The other days are missing in February and March and then April as well, spring break is no longer available and then Saturdays are gone for you and maybe one Sunday here and there. And then for summer, it's the biggest, biggest hit, the second week of June all the way until the third week of August, you are not able to go to the parks. Gotta ask yourself, do you wanna go any of those days or any of those days worth it? Is it worth the $300 more to get to the next pass? That's something you gotta ask yourself. Now we're going to go to the cheapest pass, which is going to be the Imagine Key. Now the Imagine Key is $449. Greatest thing about that is that it's $449. It's if you want to keep your magic key and you really can't afford to keep it, but you want to go a few times throughout the year, I think it's perfect. The only problem with it is that you have to be a Southern California resident. If you're not a Southern California resident, this pass is unavailable to you. It checks through the address that you have inputted into the Disney account. I don't know how strict they are and if you'd lie about it, I'm not here to tell you whether or not to tell the truth, but don't ask me. I, I have never tried to cheat the system with their Southern California resident zip code check. If anyone knows about that, please comment down below because I'm kind of curious about it. You are going to be saving $250, but what do we lose here? Well, first and foremost, the two theme park reservations at a time definitely is a major hit compared to the highest at six to the Enchant Key at four. Two reservations is kind of a tough number to swallow, meaning you can only have two reservations and you got to constantly be rotating those out as quick as you possibly can. You can't sit and hold on those important days. Not that the Imagine Key is going to have any important days. Then still, we still get the 20% off of Disney Genie Plus. I won't use it, but I think it's a great idea that you gave it to every pass, not just the highest pass. As much as I'm kind of hating on the Genie Plus thing, it is a good idea. Then the 10% off of merchandise, 10% off of dining, even the Inspire Key gets the 25% off of Toy Story parking, which I've already kind of said my piece on the parking, so we're gonna move on from that, but. So if we go to the reservation calendar and we take a look at the Imagine Key, what do we get? Well, a whole lot more days losing out. I mean, it is the cheapest pass. It is to be expected. It's going to have the most block out days. So what are we working with? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in September's are unavailable, meaning you can only go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So weekends out of the picture. Same thing with October. And there's one week in October where it's completely blocked out. I'm actually really not sure why that is. Then November, Thanksgiving, Saturdays and Sundays, December. Basically, you have 10 days to go in December and then you're blocked out all the way until January and which Saturdays and Sundays are gone from there as well. And then same with February, but you do have Fridays. You go to March, similar thing. You do have two Fridays in March, which is nice, I guess. And then April, looking at the similar thing, spring break gone, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is off the table. May, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is off the table. June, you can only go the first day of June, June 1st. And then you cannot go through the rest of summer all the way until the second to last week of September. Yeah, the Imagine Key kind of hurts a little bit when you're looking at reservations. It's a little tough. So that is all the four keys. Which one will you be going for? Comment down below. I'm still not sure which key I'm gonna go for yet. I'm really stuck between the Inspire and the Believe. I think both of them hold up a really good argument, especially when the difference is $500. Personally, I'm trying to figure out, is it worth to pay $500 to get free parking to get a slightly better discount 
and to get a few more Saturdays that I wouldn't get with the uh, Believe Key. Actually, quite a few more Saturdays. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. So if you're looking to renew, you have to have a pass prior. I'm making this a full guide because I am holding out hope. I do believe that one day we will be able to actually buy new Magic Keys and that all those that have been waiting and that barely missed the cutoff, you will be able to join the magic with us. And I think part of that actually is because a few people are not gonna be renewing their pass, but let's talk about renewing the pass. Now it's time to renew. When can you renew? You can go 30 days in advance to renew your magic key. So 30 days before, you know for sure that you want to renew your pass, you renew it, boom, immediately the next day after your pass expires, the next year starts over and you roll out 365 days on top of that. Now, if you're not sure about renewing, once your pass expires, you're not gonna be deleted from the system. You will still have the ability to renew. You just have to go online and make that renewal and you will have 30 days past your expiration date. Please do not wait till the 30 30th day. I don't actually know how exact they are with the time and, and whatnot. My advice is as soon as you know which pass you want to get, make that renewal right away. And then we get even further down and eventually we'll see the reservation stuff. The dream key is no longer available and boom, magic key renewals. Or if you really wanted to as well, the other option is to take it all the way down to the bottom and you can see under the magic key section, purchase magic key. You can see all the different keys just to review and make sure you know which one you want to get. And then if you are purchasing, when it's finally available, it'll say purchase pass. But if you're renewing like me, it will say renew pass. So let's go ahead and renew. So we're here at the prompt and we can see everything. We can see my name right here and then right next to it is what pass we want to go ahead and renew to. The good thing is, is that you can renew up or down depending on wherever you are. So say if you bought the cheapest pass because that was the only thing available at the time and you want to actually upgrade this time around, you want to go the Inspire, Believe or anything above, you actually have a renew pass later option and that's going to allow you to renew 30 days past your expiration date. This time around, compared to last year, I'm actually going to be going with the monthly payments. To anyone that is a Southern California resident, you can decide to go with the monthly payment plan. Whatever the price of the specific key you're picking, divided by 12, it's exactly the same amount of money. So you're not paying more, you're not really losing out on anything. That's why I'm gonna go out with. So let's say the automatic default option is the monthly payment. If you don't want to do monthly, you're looking for it right here in the blue at the bottom or see annual prices or monthly prices, depending on which one you're on. You see $159.99 or the monthly price $133.25. Well, let's go ahead and continue though. While we we're waiting, one of the advantages of me waiting is we didn't have to wait in that virtual queue. Jaylen and I actually ended up waiting the virtual queue the first day it came out. She waited a couple hours, not really a big deal. And this time around, I decided I just didn't want to do it. I wanted to save my time and I'll just do it when I could freely go and not have to wait in a virtual queue. If you have to wait in a virtual queue, you probably pick the day where everyone is doing the same thing as you. So below is going to be where we're going to fill out our credit card information. It's going to ask for an address, all that usual stuff. I'm going to go ahead and fill out my credit card information and my address and we'll get to the next page and we'll show you what happens next. All right, we're back. I filled out the credit card information and the address above. I didn't want to show you that. I am sorry. Didn't mean to hide anything, but I just prefer if you didn't see that. So basically it's going to come down. It's going to give you the consent to electronic stuff, basically meaning that you agree that it with them going with electronic records and signatures instead of me actually having to go in and sign it. Then it's going to be read and sign the monthly payment agreement. At the bottom, you'll find the yes, I'm 18 years of age. You check that and then you hit agree and sign. Basically a contract meaning that you are going to keep up and make payments on time and that if you don't, you'll be penalized, yada, yada, yada. And then at the bottom, is gonna give you the, I have read the magic key terms and conditions. I think that is it. Once we fill information, we just agree to all the things that we need to agree to. Hopefully if I purchase, it's gonna work. Please go through, please. Oh, thank God. And then we get balloons. I was a little worried there for a second, I'll be honest. I didn't know that uh, it was going to actually go through. Cool, so now that we've uh, got a confirmation, we've purchased it, we're gonna go ahead and just do a demonstration on how to make reservations. 
All right, so we're here at my theme park reservation, something that I'm sure you are all very familiar with. We're gonna book a theme park reservation. The really interesting thing about this is, is that it does show up for both different passes that you have. So the Dream Key Pass is there and the Inspire Key Pass renewal is there as well. Bigger thing to note is though, is that the reservation availability, like the count, how many you have, like the six out of six or whatever amount out of six, actually counts down with the less amount of days that you have. And since I'm actually doing this, the day before the pass expires, it actually is um, one day left to make a reservation on that. So I have one reservation available and that's because there's only one day left. We will look at the Inspire Key Pass and the reservations won't be available until after the new key takes place. So we've swapped from the Dream to Inspire. The Dream is gonna close out on the 25th. That's when my expiration is. And then the next day after is when the Inspire kicks in and that's when I'll be able to start making reservations with that. This doesn't exactly show very well because I'm a bad example since there's only one day left on my pass. But let's say you had the maximum amount of time until renewal, so you had the 30 days. For the next 30 days, you would be able to make reservations with your previous pass. And then any days after that, until the end of the reservation calendar, you'll be able to make reservations with that pass. Yeah, let's go ahead. We're gonna make our first reservation for Sunday. Might as well. That's gonna be the first day I finally get back to the parks. So we'll we'll do that in the video at a different time. We'll be back at the parks. Actually, we have some really interesting content that we are cooking up, Jalen and I. Very much looking forward to releasing to you guys. Um, it'll be a little bit, but we have our renewal. We're making our first reservation as an Inspire Key member. And I am definitely looking forward to getting back to the parks as soon as possible. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that this guide helped a lot. It was a lot of fun trying to go through and explain everything about the Magic Keys. Hopefully it wasn't too rambly. I do have some of my opinions that I try not to, but I definitely do sneak them into the videos. And I don't even really sneak them in that great. Oh, we just stayed there. It was a magical staycation for us, me and my girlfriend, Jalen. It was great. Make sure to check out that video if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. As always, this isn't a goodbye, but just a serial series.